Hi, welcome to the Business of Building Applications. This is a course for managers who are trying to create applications in the mobile platforms. So the chapters that we've covered so far in this course include all of these topics that you see on the screen. In this video, we're talking about hiring the team. And so we're going to be talking about development roles. If any of these topics look interesting to you, make sure you subscribe and also go back and check the playlist for this course. My name is Shad Sluter, and I teach computer science and software development at Grand Canyon University. So welcome to class, and I'm glad you're here. Now we're going to talk about dev roles, mobile development in particular, and so we're going to t talk about forming a team and presuming that you are going to be probably in the hiring role manager, or if you are the startup founder, who are the people that you are going to want to work with you? So you're going to have these four here. You'll have a product manager, a designer, a front-end developer, a back-end developer, and there could be more roles, but we're trying to keep it small here to save some expenses. So we're going to focus on these four. Now, you don't necessarily have to have four people. You might have just you, and you have to do all the roles, or you might find some people that can do multiple things. Hopefully you can, and then you can save some money. So let's talk with the first one here, a product manager. So a product manager is probably somebody that's got some senior skills. They've done this before. It's not their first application. So their goals are pretty much this. Number one, they have to figure out what problem they're trying to solve. And so this famous picture here about the project and what it was described as, what it was implemented as, and then finally what the person wanted is uh, the tire swing. So if you haven't figured it out yet, most of the videos in this course are for you, the project manager or the product manager. And your goal is to do some of these things, figure out what has to be done. The second thing that a product manager has to do is execute. Make sure that we have a plan. We know what things we're working on first, which ones are most important, what the users want, what the users should not see, and we'll move this plan forward. Also, we're going to measure our success, and this pretty much works with testing out our application with our users, our focus groups, and our early adopters. And then we're going to modify our goals. So everything in this course so far has been pretty much a product manager's kind of work. So look back at the chapters in the playlist and to see what your job is. So I did a quick search and picked out one of the roles that was advertised currently here. I live in Phoenix, Arizona, and AAA was one of the items that came up when I searched for a PM or a product manager. So what do you have to do? Well, here's what they say. So you have to man manage and monitor for defects, uh, uh, monitor ex enhancements to existing systems, identify customer needs, uh, solicit input meets commitments made to customers. In other words, you have all the responsibility, but you don't do the work yourself. You direct a team, you get the resources applied to it, and you know what's going on, and uh, you make sure that you get the resources applied to what you uh, want to do. So what do you have to have? Well, they want a college degree, it looks like. They pick five years plus experience. So you know their product manager is not going to be the first thing that you do out of college. Uh, you're, you're going to be scrum certified. So you're looking at looking, uh, managing teams, sprints. Uh, you're doing the agile software development kind of a role. And then it also says that we want uh, expertise in SQL and proficiency in programming. So they want a experienced developer that now is stepping into the manager role. So this is probably your most senior member of the team. Now let's take, take a look at the next item that I identified as one of your team members is your product designer. So a product designer is going to be the person that makes your product look really good, obviously. And so user interface is the first thing that comes to mind when it comes to a product designer. This is a person that has some artistic talent, maybe has a degree in product design, maybe a degree in fine arts. The second thing is called user experience. And there's a slight difference there. So the user interface is what it looks like. The user experience is how a product acts and, and feels to the customer. So navigation, as you can see what's being drawn here, is the logical flow of how you get through an app. But user experience can be broader than just what you see on the mobile app. So for instance, the last time you ordered anything through Amazon, you had a user experience. Uh, your user experience was that the app worked well, you clicked buy, and somebody 
really hustled hard to get that product to your door. They rang the doorbell and by the next day you were happy. And if you didn't like the product, you could return it without any cost. All of that is a user experience. So it's not just the bits and bytes on your app, it's the process of how the business works. And so user experience, of course, is a pretty critical item if you want to keep your customers. So what is a qualification for somebody who is a designer? So not just user experience, but we're, we're focused in here on, on more of the designer people. So you can see their goals. According to Peterson Technology Partners here in Chandler, Arizona, they're looking currently for a designer and they want this person to create storyboards and wireframes and user flow diagrams, create prototypes and interactive designs. Sounds a lot like what we did in an earlier activity in this course. Uh, also, we're going to be thinking about thinking methods to construct concepts that can be tested and validated with users. So remember in a previous uh, edition of this course or the previous lesson in this course, we talked about finding the niche for your product. You build something, you show it to your users, and if they don't really care about it or they don't care for it, then you don't include it. So this is what they mean by testing out your hypothesis with a group of uh, potential users. Um, actively participating in discussions and workshops with key, key stakeholders. So the point here is that the design is a pretty early part of the process of building a product and crappy designs just make a horrible first impression. So whether you have a full-time designer or you purchase the services of, an, of a contractor, a designer's uh, an important part of your job. So here's some qualifications that they say, let's get a bachelor's degree. They didn't mention what kind of a degree, but uh, where I work at the University, uh, Grand Canyon University, we have an entire degree called web design and they are artists first and uh, programmers second. And so I've actually taught some of those courses. It's pretty interesting when I uh, ask my students to pull out a piece of paper and uh, draw some diagrams. I expected like most of my courses that I've taught before that like in math or in programming, uh, people might have a pencil, might not have a pencil. Well, these designers not only had a piece of paper, it was a, it was a tablet, a square tablet of high quality drawing paper. They had a dozen pencils of different shades of gray and, of course, colors. They had rulers and protractors, and the work they did was three-dimensional and shaded. It was, it was like, if that is your approach to taking notes or making a concept come to your mind, then you're probably a designer. Um, most of the time, though, I'm teaching courses on how to manage database connections and how to do encryption and security and and honestly friends in my course you know who you are uh, you can't even draw a square with right angles so there's a skill here for people who have this innate artistic talent and they like to use technology so some of the technology that you'll be working with of course is CSS which is a design language uh, SAS is a kind of a quasi language that helps you better with CSS. Adobe products such as Photoshop and Illustrator are probably things that you have memorized and work with on a daily basis. Their experience level they're asking is they want somebody that does some UI and also UX, which is the user experience. And so there are some qualifications for a person that you want on your team. Now we're going to have two developers here. We're going to split this role into front end and the back end. So let's talk about the front end. So the front end is probably somebody that is a JavaScript expert. They're going to be able to build a web page that looks nice. You might call if this you might call this person a designer. So your designer and front end developer might actually be the same person. So that's kind of typical. I've met a lot of designers that are very good at programming in JavaScript. So there's certainly an overlap there. And so here's some of the tools that you'll see front end people working with CSS, JavaScript, and then these two frameworks, Angular and React, seem to show up all the time. So pretty much you want a React expert if you're looking for a front end developer. Now we're in mobile systems here, so what I put on the screen applies to web development and somewhat to mobile development. So mobile developers are going to be working with the uh, 
framework of your choice. And so uh, check out a previous video that I made for how to pick the right framework, which will depend on who you hire then for your front end development. So your back end developer, this person is going to be creating the uh, logic, the business sense, and the databases in the background. So you are probably going to be able to pull this back-end designer or developer from other types of programming. So you don't have to be a web, um, a mobile developer per se to be a back-end person. You'll probably do similar things uh, in other applications. So front-end is, of course, the user interface, and the back-end is how you manage the data. So those are the common splits. Now let's revisit these developer roles. So I've mentioned four. We have the product manager, the designer, the front end, and the back end developers. However, we've left out some things. So there are roles such as who's going to test this thing. So frequently you expect your developers to be able to do their own testing. And that's a good thing. If you're the manager, you're going to ask those questions in an interview. And not only can you write code, but tell me about your experience with testing frameworks. How about security? Uh, we don't we can't afford a security expert or a security team so once again you might be asking your front end and especially your back end developers what do they do about security what are some of the practices they follow and maybe some of the examples they've built in previous applications if you don't know anything about security then um, of course you want to hire in that expertise what about sales what about marketing of course those are not even technical roles but you're going to have to have that Maybe that's your expertise and what you're trying to get done. So a pretty obvious question should be about yourself. Which of these roles are you good at? And hopefully you are the product manager, first of all, because that's the uh, business of building apps in itself. But if you can do the other things, then you're well ahead of others. Now, a common practice that uh, you might find in some entrepreneurs is that they are the product manager role or the marketing expert. And they really don't know how to code or program. So from experts that have done this and created their own startup applications, uh, the usual advice is learn to code yourself so you can at least build part of the application and you can talk intelligently to the people that are doing the core work of your app. Because if you're ignorant on that, you are flying somewhat blind and you'll be less effective. Now here's one way to look at it then. If we had all of these four, what's the cheapest way to fill these roles? Well, there's you. So can you do all of them? If so, then you can maybe grow slowly, but you're on the right track. How about these? What's, let's see if we can do some outsourcing or replace them. So let's start with a designer. So a designer is not something maybe that has to be continually managed. It's a one-time thing. So maybe you could outsource the job or do it yourself. Or if you have a front-end de designer that is also your front-end developer, then you've got that one covered. Or you could buy a template. So see if you can get rid of one of these or two of these roles. Here's another way you can combine things. So the front-end and the back-end developer can combine into what's called a full-stack developer. So if you have one experienced programmer that can do both the front-end work and the database and business logic in the back, then you've saved yourself an employee. So by the way, if you're looking for employees, come to Grand Canyon University because what we're creating here are full-stack developers. So they uh, understand various languages such as C-sharp, Java, JavaScript, and PHP, and several types of databases. So there's a commercial to hire my students. So there's your roles. Now, the product manager, we're going to leave as you. So that is probably a key position that only you can really do well. Now here are some principles that probably should apply. Thinking about getting a, let's, let's assume that you're in a small company. If you're in a big company already, then this might not be a big deal. But uh, remember this, that employees are your very best assets, but also their most expensive parts of your business. Uh, employees require work to manage. And so startups need to keep the management simple and costs low. So a lot of small teams don't even have an HR department, for example. So at this stage of life, I've been in several different roles, including the technician and the manager and uh, now as a, as a professor. And so some of the principles that I would put out there is work with a small team with people that you really, really trust and appreciate rather than trying to get a big team. Um, 
be very careful and very deliberate on how you hire. Make sure that you get good recommendations. Check the references. Don't take a risk because hiring the wrong person is a painful and costly mistake. And so you'll save yourself a lot of stress and the stress of somebody else if you put the person in the wrong role that maybe they don't really want to be in. So in the next video, we're going to talk about how to create a job requisition, how to identify the actual experiences that you need to hire. If you'd like to see the entire course playlist, I'll put a link here for how to see all of these chapters. Make sure that you subscribe if this is valuable information, and thank you for coming to class with me. We'll see you next time.